Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone today to this social media broadcast and um, everyone viewing on Twitter, every of the followership on YouTube, every of the followership on Facebook and um, Instagram. We appreciate your followership so far and we believe that you have been blessed massively by the broadcast and I know this will not be an exception in the name of Jesus. Speaking today on the way of peace, the way of peace. We have prayed and we are praying for peace for our nation, but we want to look at the way of peace. Isaiah chapter 59 and in verse eight, the Bible said, the way of peace they know not, and there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall know no peace. Another translation says, you don't know what true peace is, nor what it means to be just and good. You continually do wrong, and those who follow you won't experience any peace either. Another translation, they do not know the way of peace and there is no justice in their tracks. They have made them into crooked paths. Whoever walks on them does not know peace. This is the point. Peace, which is the absence of disturbance, the absence of crisis, the absence of tension only happens in the climate of justice, fairness, and equity. It is not possible for peace to happen. It is not possible for tranquility and serenity to happen under some conditions, no matter what happens. If peace is forced to happen, in the midst of extreme abnormality, it is only temporary. It cannot last. What are those conditions in which peace cannot occur? First, there is no peace where there is injustice, unfairness, and lack of equity. Where there is injustice, massive injustice, unfairness, lack of equity. Number two, there can be no peace in the face of oppression, suppression, and subjugation of one people by another. No peace in the face of oppression, in the face of suppression, in the face of subjugation. Thirdly, there can be no peace in the face of nepotism, tribalism, regionalism, religionism, and every form of such prejudice, there can be no peace. Fourth, there can be no peace in the midst of deprivation, in the midst of poverty, in the midst of hunger, there can be no peace. Where such exists, the only thing you have around is hunger, where people are hungry and they are angry, there can be no peace. Fifthly, there can be no peace in the face of deception, falsehood, untruth, where people are not true to others. There can be no peace in the face of falsehood, depression, and untruth. Sixthly, there can be no peace in the face of indiscretion and unwisdom, where people function and act as if either they are not thinking or the people they are dealing with are taught not to be thinking. There can be no peace. Next, there can be no peace in the absence of the fear of God. There can be no peace in the absence of the fear of God where people act as if they have no conscience. Listen, the only situation where peace may exist in the face of this extreme abnormality it may either be one, maybe there is a spell or charm of apathy and indifference cast on the people. Or there is 
a massive generational mentality bankruptcy where it looks like people are not thinking or not reasoning. But there is something to know first that charm can spoil and I can clear. Second, adversity corrects mentality. Suffering returns sense. When people suffer enough, their sense correct. When people have passed through so much adversity, mentality returns. That was what happened to the prodigal son. In the book of Luke chapter 15 and in verse 17, the Bible said, he came to his senses. He came to his senses. He came to his senses after he suffered massively. He came to his senses. I don't know which of these two bedeviled our nation all this while, but I am sure that if it was a charm, it spoiled and eyes cleared. And I think that if there was a, 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 a mentality bankruptcy or a mentality shortage or poverty, I think that massive adversity, you know, extremism have corrected mentality. I've been pastoring for 24 solid years full time. I have not seen the level of suffering and the level of challenge and confrontation that people have faced like they are facing in this season. People are asking for school fees for children, asking for house rent, asking for food to eat, unemployed, all manner of pressure from society. The suffering is massive and the senses are getting corrected. Now we have faced such level of oppressiveness in our land, such level of frustration in our land, such level of suppression. We are in one segment of the, of the nation, Blood will flow like water. Killings and killers will arrive, level a whole village overnight. In some cases, they will own up that they are the ones who did it for the sake of whatever reasons they, 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 they claim. Nobody is arrested, nobody is prosecuted, nothing happens, no consequence. In another part of the country, probably the southwest or south, south or southeast, some people come out for demonstration. And before you know it, people are leveled to the ground. People are arrested, all right? So there is one law for one part and one law for another part. That is the situation we have faced so far, the situation of injustice and inequality. Now you look at the situation with appointments and positionings, and it will appear to you as if intelligent people don't exist in no other part of the country apart from some parts of the country. We have a multi-ethnic country, we have a multilingual country. We have a multi-religious country with two dominant religious bodies in the nation. But if you look at sensitive positionings, whether it's in the executive, in the judiciary, in the legislative, in the military or paramilitary, it appears as if there are no people in any other part of the country. Take a look at this. You have President Northwest Muslim, you have Senate President, Northeast Muslim, you have INEC Chairperson, Northwest Muslim, you have Speaker of the House of Representatives, Southwest Muslim, you have Chief of Air Staff, Northeast Muslim, Minister of Defense, Muslim North, Chief of Army Staff, Northeast Muslim, Inspector General of Police, North Central Muslim, National Security Advisor, Northeast Muslim, Director, uh, National Intelligence Agency, Muslim North, uh, Director General, SSS, Northwest Muslim, Controller General of Immigration, Northwest Muslim, Controller General of Customs, North Muslim, Controller General of uh, Civil Defense, Muslim North, Controller General of uh, Nigeria Immigration uh, Prison Service, Muslim North, Acting Chairman of EFCC, Northeast Muslim, Chief Justice of the Federation, Northeast Muslim, Code of Conduct Head, Muslim Northeast, Managing Director of Post Authority, Northwest Muslim, Nimasa, North Muslim, NNPC Managing Director, Northeast Muslim, Minister of Education, Northeast Muslim, National Universities Commission, Northwest Muslim, JAM, Southwest Muslim, and so on and so forth. You can keep on going on and on. Someone has said that the top 
20 positionings in NNPC is uh, occupied from the same region as well. What comes to mind is there is no intelligent person and no qualified person from any other part of the country. There is no intelligent security person, no intelligent Ijo person, no intelligent Biron person, no intelligent Magavul person, no intelligent Thief person, no intelligent Idoma person, no intelligent Igala person, no intelligent Ibira person, no intelligent Ibibio person, no intelligent Anam person, no intelligent Efik person, no intelligent Ishan person, no intelligent Bini person, no intelligent person from no other part of the country that can be in any of those sensitive positions except people from one region and one religion and people are meant to be forced to exist in peace under that kind of upside down highly nepotistic clanistic situation and that is absolutely impossible if it was a charm it cleared if it was a, a mentality bankruptcy mentality is returned it's impossible there can be no peace in such level of inequality, in such level of brazen effrontery at taking a whole nation for granted. Nations of the world did not experience one, one over 100 of what Nigerians have experienced and scattered in pieces. Soviet Union is nowhere to be found. Yugoslavia was one country that scattered and splintered into eight countries out of one country. Czechoslovakia splitted into two. They didn't see one over 100 of what we are seeing. Nations in the world that are wise enough, that are multi-ethnic, multi did their best. The United Kingdom, even though it's a nation, has ethnic groups that took care of the ethnic groups and gave regional autonomy to the Scottish, to the Irish and the Welsh. Switzerland have, has four ethnic groups and they make their presidents see to revolve around these four groups. What is the solution to the situation in our land today? If there must be peace, there must be equity, there must be fairness, there must be justice. People have clamored for restructuring it is the devolution of power. Otherwise, there may be the dissolution of union. It happened in other places. And we pray and trust God that it doesn't happen in our nation. It's not time to play the ostrich and hide the head under. What is not confronted cannot be conquered. In medicine, we call something the debridement of wounds. You expose wounds in order to repair them. You clean them out in order to repair them. You make them bleed. Truth is what heals. And if truth is not spoken, healing doesn't happen. And it is time to tell the truth. People have been suppressed, subdued, subjugated, and treated, second-rated, as if they don't have sense and they don't have reasoning. And this nation is one of the most intelligent nations in the world. Our doctors, our professionals are the most intelligent around the nations of the world. Nigerians and Nigeria people have the highest rate of PhDs in America of any ethnic group apart from maybe Americans themselves. And it is time for us to sit up and say these things must be corrected and do the right thing and we do the right thing on time so that Jehovah can hear us and answer our prayers. As for every protest going on, two wrongs don't make a right. Protests are encouraged to be very peaceful, very calm, no destruction of lives, no destruction of properties in any form. Let life not flow because there is abnormality in the land. And we believe that the Lord will help us. God bless you. And I know you will not remain the same. Share this link with your friends and let every one of us join forces together with God Almighty and let our land be healed and be saved. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you.